The healthcare industry is crashing today and I'm taking full advantage adding shares of these absolutely strong companies. We're going to take a look at every single one of them. We have UNH down 4.5%. We have Humana down around 10 to 11%. We have CVS Health Corp down 5 to 6%. And we have Allevance Health down around 5%. Now we're going to run through every single one of these, their dividend safety as well as their financial metrics. And as always, we will run them through our valuation model, getting to our intrinsic value and acceptable price. Now, a quick spoiler alert, every single one of these have around 20 to 50% upside. They are trading at significant discounts right now. And on top of that, every single one has a safe to very safe dividend score, as we can see here. So let's start off today by discussing why exactly the health stare market is falling. Now we can see Humana today warned of higher medical costs, which may hit their 2024 forecast. And this has subsequently hit those other stocks that we have discussed, as well as a few others. Now, they essentially warned that their demand for medical services and patient care would lead to higher than expected medical costs in Q4 and could hit their 2024 forecast. Now, before the bell, they were down, in fact, even more than 12%. I saw them down around 15%. And we can see it has dragged other companies like United Health, like CVS, and like Allevance Health, which continue to fall. And it's not surprising as well. It isn't the first time we heard this, as we did see last week, United Health, when they reported their earnings, they did say that they reported higher than expected medical costs for the fourth quarter as older Americans sought out different regions to use their medical services. So let's jump into the valuations. Let's start off with the first one. And this one, I have added shares today. In fact, I have added shares even at a slightly higher price, as well as buying shares towards the 52-week lows nearly a few months ago. Now, over the last year, they are up around 3.5%. Not the greatest, let's be honest, over a year period. But when we extend it to over the last 10 years, this is a company that is up 600% and it excludes those dividends reinvested. Now, personally, my own strategy for when I buy stocks is I don't look to buy a stock and hope the next day it goes up. These are companies that I'm looking that are long term quality and we will discuss why these are quality looking at the metrics. For the longer term, 10 years out, 15 years out, I fully expect these companies, specifically UNH, in today's episode to continue to outperform the S&P 500. So specifically, we see it at the midpoint of the 52-week range. We see a forward P of below 19 and a forward yield of 1.43%. Now, let's take a look. Dividend safety score, 99, very safe. In fact, the highest score obtainable. Market cap, 480 billion. It is a mega cap company. Now, in terms of those recessionary metrics for those that see a recession inbound, well, they maintain the dividend during the 0709 crash. Above average growth, plus 5% versus the S&P's negative 12%, but they did underperform the S&P with a negative 63% return versus the S&P's negative 55 Dividend growth, absolutely beautiful. 14% increase last summer, 16% on average over the last five years. 41, yes, 41% on average over the last 20 years. In terms of dividend growth, well, they have been increasing those dividends for the last 14 years. Dividend yield theory then, for those that are new to the channel, it states that the company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five-year average, 1.5 versus 1.42. So we have our first sign of undervaluation slash reasonable valuation. And we see now it is trading at a forward PE of 18, which is lower than the five-year average of 20. And when we compare it to the health sector sector PE, it is sitting roughly in line 18 versus 18.2. So let's take a look at the free cash flow payout. Remember, we do ignore the earnings. It is susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting. Below 60% is my personal preference. It gives me faith that they will continue to offer double digit increases year on year. UNH, a beauty to see consistency and below, in fact, even 30% year on year, the latest year at 27%. Free cash flow per share, well, very, very strong. 671 to 2740 in 2023. Expected to go even higher. Absolutely beautiful the way they continually and consistently increase that free cash flow generated per share. Sales growth 3 to 7%. That is what we target as a baseline for steady moderate growth. 
near enough double digit or nearly double digit every single year 2023 15% increase to the top line this is a fast growing company as we can see nearly three times their top line over the last 10 years 130 billion to 372 billion shares outstanding well 986 million to 938 they have done share buybacks but as we can see it has been very minimal over the last 10 years nonetheless they do still return excess cash to investor pockets ROIC this is absolutely crucial and for those that have joined the newsletter the link is below this is one of the metrics that I will be doing an in-depth dive in return on invested capital 10% or more is what I personally look for gives me faith that management are able to effectively allocate their capital consistently around that 19 to 20% very positive in my opinion operating margin is one area that I do believe United Health do lack I am looking for a minimum of 12% the only positive to note, it has been increasing over the last few years, but even at 9% in 2023 and 22, I would like to see it come up to the 12% level. On the free cash flow margin, what we can see is that it is sitting around that 5% minimum that we look for. In fact, 7% over the last few years. So not too bad. It is above the minimum that we seek. Net debt to EBITDA, earnings before interest tax, depreciation, amortization. What this signals is the essentially two things, the dividend safety and the balance sheet strength. 2023, it would take them 0.91 years to pay off all of their debt net of cash in hand. Not only is this below the three, but look at that, it is decreasing. It is coming down 2024 expected 0.79. So they have a very strong balance sheet and we can understand now why that dividend is very safe. As always, if you're enjoying the content, value is being provided, smash that like button, hit the subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Don't forget you can grab a copy of the valuation model to get to the intrinsic value and acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio or on your watch list. Now, typically for the deep dives, we run through every single one of these models. For today, let's jump straight into UNH's intrinsic value, which works out to be the average of the three models on the screen at $613. Now, the price is fluctuating. It has been around $500 to $510 in the pre-market and in the opening, but around $507. We always start off with a margin of safety of 10%. Now, I use this if I believe the company has a wide moat, strong financial metrics, good forward-looking data. You could argue with UNH it does tick two of those in terms of their central forward guidance. There is a bit of a question mark around how much that will impact their forward guidance as well as their 2024 forecast with the rising medical costs. But again, that is why we use a margin of safety, 15% a buy up to 521, 20% around 490. So personally, I have been adding this because I do believe a 15% margin of safety is sufficient. But in reality, we are getting between a 15 to 20% margin of safety at the current trading price of around $507. What do Wall Street forecast? Well, they see a price target of $602.50 over the next 12 months. So they do believe UNH is a buy with upside of 19%. As we go along this video today, do let me know your thoughts, whether or not you do agree with any of what I'm saying on this healthcare episode special. We then move on to the second company, which is Humana, which has been absolutely destroyed today. It was in fact down 15%. It is down now around 11%. Over the last year, it's down around 18%. And over the last 10 years, well, it is up 317%. Again, it doesn't include those dividends reinvested. But we see it's pretty much at the 52-week low. It was even trading at $390 today. Now, in terms of the yield, 0.8%. And we can see a forward PE of 15.82. So let's jump into the financial metrics. Well, dividend safety score 99, it is very safe. Market cap 54 billion, a large cap company. And when we take a look at those recessionary metrics, well, they didn't pay a dividend during the last recession, above average growth. And in fact, they did trail the S&P negative 72%. Dividend growth, 12% in February 23, 15% in the last five years, 12% over the last 10 years. Very strong double digit increases and they have been increasing those dividends for the last 11 years. What about dividend yield theory? Well, lo and behold, it does look like it's undervalued with a yield of 0.88% versus the five year average of 0.68. And you can see right now that forward PE is trading at 13 versus the five year average of 18.5, a double sign of undervaluation. But as always, we don't conclude in any of these models in isolation. And we see they are significantly lower than that healthcare sector PE of 18.2. 
In terms of the free cash flow payout, well, 2022 at 11%, 2023 expected 9% based on their annual report. So very, very strong. I would be shocked if we do not see a double digit increase again from Humana in 2024. Free cash flow per share, well, very, very inconsistent. It is increasing over the last 10 years, but it is a bit of a worry that it has been very inconsistent. Although do note 2023, it is expected to increase significantly from the last year. Sales growth, double digits every few years we can see, although we do know pretty much flat in 2016, 2017. It is nice to see 2023 a very strong 12% to the top line, higher than the last two years. And numerically speaking, they have more than doubled their top line from 41 billion to 93 billion. In terms of shares outstanding, where they do consistently reduce their share count, as we can see from 159 to 127. In terms of ROIC, very positive to see it's above 10%. And over the last few years, in that 16 to 17% is also a very strong indicator that management are performing their job very well. Again, what you will notice, this is quite common in the industry for the healthcare, where they do not tend to get to that 12%. It is a little bit lower than I would like. UNH, we did see it around the 9%. Human around 5%, again expected in 2023, would be something I would say just to keep an eye on if you are an investor or a potential investor. And the same can be said for the free cash flow margin. In terms of the net debt to EBITDA, well, absolutely fantastic. And this actually is better than United Health. It wouldn't even take them one day to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. So let's jump into the valuation and let's see what we get as the intrinsic value. So we see today the intrinsic value is $525. Now the current price, again, it has increased. It is sitting now around $400. But again, we start off with a margin of safety of 10%. It is a buy up to 472. At 20% up to 420. And at 25%, we can see it isn't a buy yet because it has increased slightly. So right now you are getting at least a 20% margin of safety. In fact, slightly higher than 20%. What are Wall Street saying? Well, they see a humongous 48% upside to Humana. They do believe Mr. Market has reacted irrationally and emotionally, and they see a price target of 580. Let me know if you are also adding Humana stock to your portfolio today. We then move on to CVS Health Corporation. Now, they are down 5% today. Over the last year, down around 14%, we can see that they are trading towards the mid to lower end of the 52-week range. Forward yield, 3.5%. Forward PE, just under 9 And we can see that over the last 10 years, you'd be up around 13.88%. And in fact, we can see it coming up, down, up, down. It is very, very inconsistent when you do look at that shell share return performance. Dividend safety, 90, another very safe. Market cap, 100 billion, a large cap company. Recessionary metrics, well, they increased the dividend during the last recession above average growth and also outperformed the S&P with a negative 38% return. Very nice to see just under 10% increase a few weeks ago for CVS Health, although disappointingly only 2% increase year on year on average over the last five years. 16% over the last 20 years, very nice to see. And we do know they have only been increasing those dividends for the last year. As we can see here, they did have many years where they did just keep that dividend maintained at the same level. Dividend yield theory then, undervaluation signal 3.63 versus 2.88. Forward P 8.7 below that five-year average of 10. So another undervaluation double signal here. And we can see the healthcare sector P is significantly higher. Now, when we take a look at the free cash flow payout, very positive to see, in fact, below 40% over the last 10 years, 2022 at 21%, 2023 at 27%. So we can see it is looking very low. So I would be surprised if we don't see another very strong dividend increase this year. Free cash flow per share were more than three times growth over the last 10 years. Now it isn't consistent, but it is moving in the right direction. But again, just pointing out 2023's annual report is expected to see a drop to that free cash flow per share. Sales growth, well, we can see here, whilst not double digit every single year, 2022 and 2023 expected to be double digits to the top line. So this is looking like a very strong company on the more recent period documents that we have. Total sales then, they have essentially more than doubled their top line, 127 billion to 322. 
One thing to note, they were doing share buybacks from 2013 to 2017. And then we see the opposite. So overall, if you had bought in 2013, your overall net position would be a net dilution as we see the share count increase by around 100 million. Then when we look at the ROIC, it is a bit low for my liking. We can see in 2018, it has been around 7%, 2023 around 9%. So something just to keep an eye on. And when we look at the margins, again, not surprisingly for the industry, they are fairly low alongside that free cash flow margin. So we can see the healthcare industry, they do struggle with the margins. So if you are looking to invest, that would be one area that I would say to keep your eye on. And net debt to EBITDA, we see 2022 at 2.38, 2023 at 2.79. A little bit too close to that three for my liking, but we can see it is still below that number. So in terms of the valuation for CVS Health, let's jump in and have a look at that intrinsic value. We get a price of $100. Now, current price around $73. Margin of safety of 10% at $90 is a buy. 15% well, $85. 20% still sharing a buy. And at 25%, pretty much around the current trading price. So again, another company that has a significant margin of safety. And we see even Wall Street are expecting upside of 27% with a price target of 93. Now, out of the stocks that we have discussed so far, UNH is my favorite. It does have the strongest metrics, in my opinion. It is also trading a slightly less margin of safety as this CVS and the previous Humana, which may tell you something. A lot of quality companies rarely trade at a massive discount. But with all three that we have discussed so far, they are trading at a massive upside, in my opinion, over the next few months. We then move on to another healthcare stock that has been hammered. Another one that I did pick up today, Allevance Health. Now, over the last year, it is down 5%. It is trading in the mid to lower end of the 52-week range. Also, to point out, they are shortly due to report their earnings. They have a yield of 1.24% and a forward PE of 14%. Over the last 10 years, another strong performance, though, of 441%. Dividend safety score, 99, very safe. Market cap, 111 billion, a mega cap company. Recessory metrics, well, they didn't pay a dividend in the last recession. Above average growth and pretty much trailed the S&P with a negative 61% return. Dividend growth, beautiful, 16% Jan 23, so we should be expecting another increase in the next few days. Last five years, 14% on average. Last 10 years, 16%. What's not to love with those consistent double-digit increases? And we can see they have been increasing those dividends for the last 11 years. Dividend yield theory, where well, we have that sign of undervaluation, 1.3 versus 1.2. And we can also see the forward PE 12.7 below that five-year average. In terms of the sector health PE, 18.2. Allevance Health is much, much lower. Free cash flow payout, what is not to love with this? The last few years, in fact, below 20%, 2023 at 16%. It is very positive for me to see that when companies pay out strong double-digit increases and their free cash flow payout is very low. Free cash flow per share, increasing $8 in 2013, 30 in 2022, 35 expected in 2023. Yes, it isn't essentially consistent, but over the longer term, it is moving in the right direction and very, very strongly at that too. Sales growth, 3 to 7%. We see that from around 2014 to 2018. After that period, strong double-digit growth to the top line. 2023 expected more of the same. And when we take a look at that numerically, top line has more than doubled 71 billion to 157 in 2022. They also do share buybacks, very positive to see, buying back around 60 million worth of shares over the last 10 years, buying back around 20% of those outstanding from 2013. ROIC, again, it meets that criteria 10% or more consistently as well. The last few years expected to be around 14%. It is something that is very important for me in my investing decisions. Again, no real surprise here with those low operating margins, 5% expected in 2023. Again, this is something that as an investor of this company, I am keeping quite a close eye on. And the free cash flow margin, very similar to UNH, it does tend to straddle around that minimum 5% target. Net debt to EBITDA, well, nothing much to say other than that it has a very strong phenomenal balance sheet and that dividend does remain to be safe with not even a day for them to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. 
So let's get to the intrinsic value. Don't forget if you enjoy the video, content is being provided. Smash that like button, hit the subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. And don't forget you can click on the pinned comment below to grab your copy of the model to get to your own intrinsic value of companies in your own portfolio and watch list. Margin of safety then 10%, it is a buy up to 496, 15% up to 469, 20% around 441. So again, you aren't getting as much of the margin of safety as CVS or as Humana, but you're getting roughly in line with UNH around 15 to 20%, up to 469. And what are Wall Street saying? Well, they see a price target of $567, so they see around 25% upside. So in conclusion, we have the healthcare market, which has been effectively hit by these higher than expected medical costs. Now, in my personal opinion, if this is going to be a really big issue for these healthcare companies, I would imagine they would start to raise those premiums and we would see a higher increase to the top line, which would adjust for this additional cost that they weren't expecting. And again, a lot of them are looking like they have a very strong margin of safety. United Health and Allevance are two of the ones that I really do like. I have been adding them today, as we have discussed. There is a lot of upside across all of them from what Wall Street is saying, as well as what we believe when we are calculating their intrinsic value. You. As always, though, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, whether or not you agree, whether or not you have even been adding any of these healthcare companies. And as always, I will catch you on the next episode. Smash if you enjoyed today's content. I can do more of the similar undervalued, especially in the oil and gas sector, which is also looking like it is in need of a lot of undervaluation. As always, have a great day. Catch you on the next episode and take care.